Let's run through our next problem here. Got a machine, just fired it up and it reset normally. And um, we'll drop the drop targets. Okay, when all the drop targets are down, remember every third uh, time we hit 500 points in advance bonus, it's gonna rotate around and light double bonus. So every third time, because in a previous episode we talked about the score motor and the 1E, 3E, and 4E switches. So remember from our baseline what's supposed to happen here. I've got 10,000 points of bonus on the machine. I'm going to put the ball in the um, kickout hole. What's supposed to happen, remember, is it's supposed to count down this uh, bonus and double it and nothing's happening here. So let's, uh, let's for grins, let's bring the double bonus back up. Okay, it's lit. We've got 15,000 bonus. So we should get a countdown to 30,000 bonus. No countdown. It's, it's stuck on uh, the bonus value. It didn't count anything down. So what's our problem here? All right, you can see right here, I've got a piece of blue painter's tape in there, and there are a pair of switches on the drop target unit. Let me move the camera a bit. So as you can see, the drop targets are all down. Let's put them back up. And what's supposed to happen, inside this mechanism, there's a, uh, there's a bar going across inside the unit. And that bar is propped up by these four drop targets. As they drop, once the last one goes, that lever drops, which actually lets these switches activate. And you can actually see it on the right-hand side. I'm going to drop the camera here. All right, I'm going to try to show these switches. I don't know if it'll show up in the camera, if we can see an actuation here. Um, since all the drop targets are down, all I have to do is push up one drop target, and it'll push that lever and actuate those switches. And right there you can see it open the switches. They're both closed when all targets are down. They're both open when all the targets, when one of the targets is up. All right, so we'll walk through this, uh, pull up a couple drawings from a previous episode. This particular part of the schematic around B3 shows those three lights that um, will alternate if you get all of the targets on the play field, they'll alternate, but any one of them will be on every third time once you enable one. So in this case, we were seeing the double bonus light every third time, and that is actually enabled because um, the J, there's a J relay, con and its contact is normally closed. Let's not worry about that. Uh, remember, there are two switches on each of the two switch banks. One of those switches is for the light, the other is for actually giving the double bonus. So on the light section, that switch was working fine. So we didn't have any issues with the light turning on. Once I knocked down both sets of drop targets, we then had a circuit um, every third time motor 1E closes. So every third time that light's going to come on. And remember, one time it's motor 1E, one time it's motor 3E, one time it's motor 4E. Um, and I, don't know, I shouldn't delve too deeply into this, but 6B is enabled when all the rollovers are down. So that's why in this case, since we didn't have the rollovers down, we didn't see special or extra ball. We only saw a double bonus because 6B was open. You can refer to a previous episode that explains that 6B relay. So now what was our problem? Here is the schematic around section F7, and it shows... Um, uh, again, there are switches on motor 1E and motor 4E. And it doesn't show 3E on this particular section. But right here is the switch that I blocked open. The 1776 bank uh, would normally close when the bank's down. And the 1976 bank switch would normally close when the, ball, um, when the bank is down. If those are down and you put the ball in that kickout hole, that's going to close this switch. Well, actually, it's going to close the G relay, which has a contact on it, which will close this switch. So all three of these are closed. Remember, every third time, if, if motor 1E is closed, 
then it's going to initiate the J relay. And the J relay is actually called Bonus Unit Score Control Relay. Uh, but I think now we have to dive into the spider web of the double bonus and the bonus countdown unit to explain how that's working. Um, it gets a little complicated, so we're going to take this in three phases. The first phase is just going to be a simple bonus countdown. There's bonus on the machine. It's going to count down until um, there is no more bonus. We'll worry about double bonus and uh, the kickout hold double bonus later. So there uh, are several zero position bonus units that are uh, tied to that bonus unit. As soon as it has any kind of bonus at all, those switches transition. So this particular switch will close after some bonus is on the machine. Once the ball drains, the ball return switch will close. Now, we're not going to worry too much just yet about the anti-cheat switch, the motor 2B and the motor 1C. Those are all normally closed. So we, as we can see, there's a circuit here as it works through these switches up. The ball return switch is closed because the ball drain. There's bonus on the machine, so zero position bonus uh, unit switch closes, which is going to actuate the E relay, which is the bonus unit score relay. Now that relay is responsible for counting down the bonus. Let's take a look at that. There are six contacts on that relay, the E relay. There's a hold on relay and then there are several other relays and we're going to actually walk through each one of these in sequence. Now, obviously the bottom one, the score motor is the easy one. Uh, as we can see here, there's the E relay. As long as the E relay is closed, the score motor is going to run. What else? Well, let's look at, uh, at these two here. This normally closed contact for the L relay and another contact for the L relay. The L relay is the thousand point score relay. When the E relay is energized, which means it's time to count down bonus, it opens this switch right here. And um, we'll explain that later when we get into the G relay, which is tied to that kickout hole in the play field. But what this is saying is right now this it's going to disable this circuit. However, it is going to close this E switch. And remember, here's another zero position bonus switch. When there's some bonus on the machine, it's going to close. So all of these are closed to the L relay, which is the thousand point relay. Okay, that's great. Remember motor 1A, it's kind of the linchpin of this machine. It's going to pulse five times for every cycle the score motor runs. So all of these are closed. Motor 1A for uh, a 120 degree cycle of the score motor, one third of the score motor, one third rotation of the score motor is going to pulse five times, which will trigger, trigger 5,000 points. So as that motor 1A is triggering, every time it triggers, since these are all closed, 1,000 points is going to go with each pulse. Here's another example of an E-switch that's normally closed. It's going to open while the E-relay is energized, which is disabling the hole kicker. And again, we'll get into that hole kicker and that G switch with the play field kick out switch. All right, so now let's get into the meat of this thing. Here is the final contact right here. And you'll see again motor 1A. That's not by coincidence. Motor 1A is everywhere on this machine. So when the E relay is energized, this E switch will close. And for right now, we're going to assume that this is going to stay closed. This is the double bonus relay. And let's we're, for right now, there is no double bonus. It's just straight bonus. We're also going to assume this J relay is closed. We'll get into that in a little bit as well. So the E relay is energized. It's going to be closed. Here's another zero position bonus unit switch. It's going to be closed because we have bonus on the machine. Every time motor 1A pulses, since all of these are closed, we have a path to the subtract bonus unit coil. It's going to actually decrease the amount of bonus by one with every one of those five pulses. And 
because we have this circuit as well with motor 1A, a thousand points is going to be added to the machine. So every time motor 1A pulses, as long as that E relay is enabled, the um, the bonus is going to subtract by one with every pulse, and it's going to add a thousand points to the machine with every pulse. All right, so now uh, standard bonus countdown is pretty straightforward, but now let's look at double bonus countdown. And this is uh, part of the schematic 7D section, and you can see the double bonus light and um, You'll see this LB relay here. LB is the double bonus relay, and it's enabled when the last ball is in play. So the last ball gets double bonus. You can also see right here there's a box, three to five ball adjustment. It can either be three or five. Uh, but when it's on ball five, which is what my machine is right now, as these contacts in the player unit are made, um, if you reach this section, it's going to close this circuit and it's going to enable LB. Now LB is actually a relay on that bank uh, on the bottom of the play field, similar to the rollovers. It's a latch relay. It's a mechanical latch relay. As soon as it energizes, um, it doesn't need power anymore. It's going to stay energized. It's going to stay latch because it's a mechanical latch. There are four contacts for the LB relay, and I'll give you a sneak preview right here is one of them. It's going to open that. So there's the um, they're all normally closed contacts. The, there's one that opens for the relay, and I think that's in case there's a mechanical issue. It's, it wants to open that up. So the other ones, there are two on the subtract bonus unit that open, right here and right here. And then there's one that opens right here on the L relay. And this is pretty clever on Gottlieb's part. So um, let's see how best to explain this. Uh, if we're on ball five, obviously this path is open. So the only way we're going to get a thousand points is when motor 1A pulses and E is on, as we saw earlier with the bonus countdown when the ball, um, the ball return switch hits, or also uh, if it's in the play field kickout hole and we'll get to the playfield kickout hole in a little bit. So let's assume right now we're only talking about a drain ball on ball five. So that E switch is going to be closed. Motor 1A always pulses five times every single time. But if double bonus is lit that takes this leg of the circuit out. That means the circuit has to come through here to score. And on a it's a normally closed switch on motor 3C. That's a key point because if we look at 3C that means it's going to be closed this entire time except it's going to be open right here and you can see that this open correlates with the fifth pulse of 1A. So that means as long as the zero bonus switch, zero position bonus switch is closed, meaning there's bonus on the machine, it's going to pulse four times five times here, but one of the times motor 3C is going to be open during the fifth pulse. So we're only going to get four pulses from 1A, and that's on the L relay. That means every cycle the motor is only going to score 4,000 points. This is a key point because if we go back to the subtract bonus unit, this is what actually decrements the bonus on the machine. If you look here, there's motor 1A again. It's going to pulse five times. Now, in this case, remember we're on ball five. It's double bonus. These two LB switches are open, which are in effect disabling these legs of the circuit. Um, I should say this leg and this section. What we will see, though, is motor 1A will pulse five times. As I mentioned, E is going to be closed because it closes when it's in the out hole. That means that motor... 3C and motor 2C, when they close, we're going to see action over here. For right now, we're going to consider J staying closed, and J is going to be part of that play field out hole switch. It's not a factor here because we're talking about draining, so that's going to stay closed. 
Okay, what does all this mean? This motor 1A will pulse five times. The E switch is closed. So depending on when motor 3C and motor 2C close, we'll decide which of those five pulses make it through. And that is because we're assuming there's bonus here, so that's going to be closed. J is closed. So there are two paths here to this E switch. Now let's look again at the motor sequence chart. Here's 2C and here's 3C. These, in this case, are open, normally open switches. They only close on two pulses of motor 1A. This is a key point. Twice they close. That means on a no, normal motor cycle, the subtract bonus unit is only going to work two times on that fifth ball. Once there are five pulses here, this is closed. The one pulse of 2C that closes when on one of the motor 1A pulses will decrement subtract bonus. And then the one, time, one pulse of motor 1A when 3C is closed will decrement subtract bonus unit. On any motorcycle, that means two decrements happen. But on any motorcycle, as we showed, we can see 4,000 points. That's how they get the double bonus. 4,000 points or two bonus decrements. A recap, this thing's going to pulse five times. This is closed because it drained. This one's open because it's double bonus on the last ball. Motor 3C is closed, normally closed. Right there, it's going to open on that fifth pulse. So we'll see four pulses for 4,000 points. But here we'll only see two pulses because they're normally open switches on 3C and 2C. There's 2C, there's 3C. They line up with only two pulses of decrement. So now let's get crazy and talk about what happens um, when the ball is in the out hole and both double bonus lights are, are turned on. The LB switches will open because it's ball five. And then this J switch will open because you get double bonus on the kick out hole. That takes 2C out of play. That means only when motor 3C closes will you see the bonus decrement. So even though motor, five, motor 1A is pulsing five times, it's only going to make it through when motor 3C closes. That's one time per cycle. Motor 3C right there. One time per cycle. But if the decrement only happens one time per cycle, what happens during uh, bonus? During the scoring? Well, it's still going to pulse four times. It's just that there's one less decrement on the bonus stepper, so you'll see 4,000 points per bonus decrement. Now, I hope that makes sense. You may need to play this back. Really, the key here is to focus on the fact that this is a normally closed switch most of the time for 3C, which means it's closed all this time except for this one time. Pretty clever how they used a normally closed switch here, and then they used normally open switches here. Um, now, let's dig into the playfield kick-out hole double bonus, which brings a J-relay into, into play. Alright, so the J-relay is the bonus unit scorer control relay. Eight sets of switches on this bad boy. Lots going on. The good news here is a lot of this is in sections. So, let's start with the uh, basic schematic. And what we've got, uh, you can see the J-Relay right here, and you can see a hold-on contact here and a hole switch. But obviously, that's never going to, a uh, hole switch here isn't going to do anything because the J-Switch uh, is going to be open. So we have to look at the other path. And we can see we've seen this schematic before, this part of the schematic before. Here's motor 1E. There are those two drop target banks. If they're both down, 
and a ball is in the kickout hole in the play field. Remember I talked about G. Well, let's take a look at G. So here's the hole relay, and you'll see a hole switch here. There are actually two switches on the bottom of that kickout hole in the play field. So this one closes, and as you can see, we've got a path all the way to G. G is going to, uh, the relay will be enabled, so all the G switches will change state. For instance, it'll hold on. We already talked about G, so we're not going to spend time on that right now. You can look at the earlier part of the video for that. But what that does is it locks this G switch on, which then enables this circuit for J. All right, so once J locks, the hold on switch will close, contacts will close, and since the ball is still in the hole, we have a circuit now for J. So what that is doing is turning on the J relay. And I think a key point here is this. This only happens when motor 1E is in place. If motor 3E, uh, remember uh, on the top of the motor there's a long post and it'll be every 120 degrees the motor turns, it's either going to stop on 1E, 3E, or 4E. Well, if it's on 3E, that's for the extra ball. If it's on 4E, that's for the add replay. It's only when it's on the, the double bonus selection does this whole thing kick in. So the J really is for double bonus. So, with that said, let's look at the switches. So we've got a couple right here, and let's let's just talk about them right here while we've got it here. So there's a hold-on contact for J, and then there are two normally closed contacts, and those open. Really what that is doing is disabling the replay and the extra ball while the J relay is on. So while that J double bonus relay is on, you cannot get a replay or an extra ball. It's just locking them out, basically. The next schematic is around E19. And we can see a couple switches here. There, here's another normally closed that opens. So when the J relay is uh, enabled, the ball return relay is not going to work. And then we've got a normally closed or normally open switch here in parallel to the ball return switch. This is a key point. Basically, this is doing the same thing as if the ball drained to initiate the bonus unit score relay. If there's bonus on the machine, and if the J uh, relay is actuated, it's going to close the switch. We're going to have a circuit to E. Now remember, E was um, part of the, the circuitry to count down bonus. So let's see what else do we have here. E14. Here's E14. Uh, again, we can see two normally closed switches, and this is getting into how the bonus counts down. Remember the double bonus conversation we had where there would be two decrements to the uh, bonus unit, but you get 4,000 points? This is doing the same thing. See how LB and J are together, and they're in parallel, parallel here? I'm not going to go into this again in detail because I think I did a pretty good job a few minutes ago covering it, but this is how if J, if, if you get it double bonus on the play field kickout hole, these J's are going to open. If you get double bonus because it's the last ball, these LB's will open. And if you get last ball double bonus and you get double bonus on the kickout hole, all four of these switches, both LBs and both J's open, which gives us that math that I, I demonstrated before to get, in that case, quadruple bonus. Now, I hope this all makes sense. Uh, I think this is one of the more complex parts because there are a lot of relays and a lot of contacts in, in effect here. But um, hopefully this helps understand it a little better.